Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office for Saturday, January the 13th, 2024. In today's update, we are keeping an eye on another weather system that's going to graze the deep south into the northeast. This is going to bring another round of heavy snowfall for some locations, but also a potential ice storm could be now thrown into the mix with some very cold Arctic air continuing. So firstly, looking at the European model for this afternoon, and we can see where our system currently is the one that's going to bring a lot of snow and some ice for the deep south locations and it is located right now over california oregon nevada as well as idaho bringing quite a bit of snowfall and a lot of icy conditions over salem oregon over portland oregon lots of problems there trees coming down people sliding off the roads because of how much ice has accumulated and there's more coming very heavy rainfall and some mudslides, debris flows, a lot of problems in the northern portion of California, like uh, say Eureka, as well as Crescent City. So a lot of problems occurring with this winter storm, and this is going to continue to cause problems once it gets into the, the southern portion of the U.S. So going forward here, we can see a little bit of strip of snow going to start developing by Sunday morning over the high plains here, such as Oklahoma and Kansas. We're not talking a whole lot of accumulation here, but enough to cause a little bit of commuting problems or anything that you have outdoors. Certainly some very cold temperatures too. Don't forget about that. Single digits, maybe some negative territory temperatures to start your Sunday morning as that Arctic air mass really surges southward continuously. All right, but that's not it. Let's go all the way into Sunday night into Monday morning. This is where we do have that little bit of snow. Also, a little bit of icy conditions. So we might see some very slick, hazardous travel on the roadways. Some air travel as well could really be impacted because of this winter storm. Not a huge system. Not like what we just saw with Winter Storm Jerry. But still, we're talking a little bit about snow and ice where it hasn't virtually snowed at all this year. So huge changes coming um, this weekend in the early next week on Monday. And that continues all the way into, say, Tuesday and Wednesday. Look at that ice really going to accumulate down there potentially according to the European model. Now, as far as does this become a nor'easter once it gets into the northeast or any part of it, that is... Most likely not. Models have really backed off on any nor'easter type system. Well, it is a nor'easter here, but it's too far offshore. You're going to get a little bit of snow, maybe a couple of inches at most, but we're not talking about a bombing type nor'easter cyclone. Nothing like the Midwest has seen yesterday. Instead, you're just going to get a little light dusting of snow in these areas. Maybe the continuation, of course, of lake effect snow, that's going to be out there and that's going to be a problem. Okay, so now then going forward, that system exits the area and then maybe more systems thereafter, potentially over the west. And let's go forward in time. Another system may be dropping southward here into the northern plains and the Great Lakes by the end of next week. And then maybe more big storms potentially over California. We really need the rain, so we can definitely use that. So now, looking at the GFS model, this is the American model. We're comparing the two models. Of course, here's a look at that big storm system that moved across the Midwest, causing a lot of problems, blizzards, damaging winds, power outages, lake effect snow. I mean, what a wild system that was, right? Another system, that's the one that the Euro is showing, and then that moves into the Midwest. But even look at the signal here, even lesser than that of the European model. Barely any snow at all, maybe a dusting or a flurry for Kansas and Oklahoma. But once this gets like into Arkansas and even into, say, Tennessee, that's when the snowfall rates could increase a little bit more. But again, we're not talking two or three feet of snow, folks. This is not that type of system. Instead, a good accumulation, a more like a beneficial accumulation, I would say. Nothing too unusual with that system. By Tuesday and Wednesday, that moves into the northeast. But see, these two models are agreeing that there won't be a nor'easter. We're not talking about three or four feet of snow. Instead, maybe just a dusting at most for that portion of the U.S., 
And then, of course, California might get more active weather by the middle to the end of next week. So here's a look at those snowfall totals for Arkansas, for Tennessee, for the Kentucky region, anywhere between maybe four to maybe seven inches at most. Some areas like the higher elevations might get as much as, say, eight to maybe 10 inches of snow, but we're not talking a foot or at the moment, okay? That's what the GFS is, or the NAM. Uh, this is not the GFS, this is the, actually a high resolution model, a indication that, again, snowfall amounts really not gonna be too terribly bad. When we look at the European model, also similar amounts, but also for their south here, maybe as much as eight to 10 inches there for Northern Mississippi. Looking at the GFS model, very similar amounts. So again, overall, not a big system, but yeah, winter storm warnings are issued for your area. So just keep that in mind. Take it as it is a snowstorm, even the high res model there, not showing much. However, over the uh, uh, Intermountain West from that same system that we're getting, maybe a couple of feet of snow for the favored areas for the higher elevations in Utah, as well as Colorado, including for Nevada and the Sierras, likely to get quite a bit of snow. But I did not want to forget you all in the Great Lakes region, where some of you with that lake effect snow, you might get an additional one to two feet in some isolated locations. So keep that in mind. May not snow for you, but if you're in the wrong spot, uh, downstream of these lakes where the wind is blowing right, you could get a lot and a lot of snow and impacts. Now the question remains, how much ice accumulation could you get according to our numerical models. Well, looking at the GFS first, we are looking at anywhere between maybe a 10th to maybe a quarter of an inch of ice down here in Louisiana and central Southern Mississippi, including for portions of Alabama. Again, a 10th of an, a tenth of an inch of ice is enough to bring down some tree branches, maybe some power outages as well. When you get at least a quarter of an inch of ice, you could certainly see a lot of trees come down and more power outages. Looking at the European model, very bullish here. Uh, let's look at the Canadian model and we'll get back to um, the European in just a second. So looking at that model, also um, similar to the GFS with its ice accumulation. So making the European here very bullish and really concerning uh, for uh, throughout the next couple of days with that ice accumulation, possibly Dallas, um, in central Texas, between a tenth to a quarter of an inch, whereas maybe northern Louisiana and southern portion of Arkansas, you might get a quarter of an inch to maybe three or four tenths of an inch. Four tenths of an inch will lead to certain power outages and widespread tr down trees and branches, even some weakened structures. Uh, some of the roofing could even collapse because of a lot of ice that does accumulate, a lot of weight bearing. So keep that in mind. With this winter storm, we're also going to have snow, and but the ice, the, the freezing rain accumulation is also going to be the concern. Sleet totals as well, anywhere between a tenth to a quarter of an inch. So it's going to be the snow, it's going to be the, uh, the freezing rain, and also the sleet, a Neapolitan storm, I call it, kind of the three different flavors of this winter storm. Another thing to be concerned about is the temperatures. Very cold Arctic air is in place and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's take a look at this, right? Overnight temperatures tonight in some of the coldest spots, I mean, we're talking single digit temperatures in Oklahoma, Northern Texas, even some single digits in Northern Arkansas. I mean, look at in the longitudinally, uh, you're at 35 degrees north in latitude and you're seeing temperatures as cold. For Indiana, you might see temperatures negative 5 to negative 8 degrees. And look at this. For much of the upper mid or the northern plains, I should say, and the Dakotas, you might see temperatures as cold as negative 15 to negative 25 degrees overnight tonight. That is really concerning. You're not used to it this early in the season and yet you're going to be dealing with quite a bit of impacts, all right, with those colder temperatures. You're not used to it, I promise you. And then once again, really cold, perhaps even colder for Chicago and portions of Iowa because that colder air is going to stay in place. But that's not all. It's going to remain that way for a while as we go through much of this week. That colder air really not going to lift up at all until we possibly get into Wednesday before maybe another Arctic air mass really nosedives yet again 
for next weekend. That could bring about maybe another round of negative 10 to negative 15 to negative 25 degree temperatures potentially. All right, so we, we got to watch the models over the next week because the colder air is not going to be abating until perhaps once we get all the way into maybe next next week uh, for the 22nd and the 23rd of January when it looks like some areas could then have temperatures in the upper 30s to lower 40s. Now, that's a big contrast from the negative temperatures that you're going to be witnessing over the next three to six days. Because of this, wind chill warnings are now being extended all the way down now into central Texas, most of Oklahoma under a wind chill warning. I mean, you can just count all of these areas right in here are under wind chill advisories or wind chill warnings. That's just telling you how expansive the Arctic air mass is. And then to the south of that, we have winter storm warnings for all of Arkansas, essentially for central and southern Texas under Art, oh, well, under wind chill or not wind chill, um, winter storm or winter weather advisories. And there we go. And then winter storm watches down here for central Mississippi, northern Alabama. I mean, golly word. I mean, I just cannot fathom. You still got winter storm warnings and blizzard warnings out of this for the Dakotas as well as for Iowa, for Nebraska. My gosh, this is just insanity. And then you got wind chill watches down there in central southern Colorado. And then, of course, winter storm warnings back across the west, even including a high wind warning, ice storm warnings. Wow. I'm telling you right now, when uh, we got storm warnings, winter weather, uh, winter storm warnings, as well as high wind warnings there for the Great Lakes. This is very significant. You don't see that very often, okay? Please stay warm. Please stay inside and enjoy my videos because I'm going to keep you all updated on this weather pattern as far as it looks every day now. We're going to just be uploading every single day on the latest weather near you. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Folks, if you did find this video very helpful, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I mean, we're getting close to 20,000, so thank you for um, supporting me. Hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. I will be back with another video tomorrow. Um, I'm going to try to get one out earlier than today because, I mean, it's almost 4 o'clock. But otherwise, thank you all for watching.